All right. Good afternoon, my friends. Those watching after the fact, we've just listened to the brilliance of our last two. I think we got one more. So we'll have uh, Chandra um, hopefully next week. But uh, we've listened. And I honestly think you folks have done a great job. I know it's not easy to take content that is not your own and to own it. But you folks did really well. You took the content and you owned it. I just want to give a few tips for improvement in the future. The number one thing you could do to improve your skills in public speaking is to practice. So I want you to put this on your calendar, please. This is going to help us. It's going to help you, but it's also going to help us when you have to do this whole thing again. Number one, write everything down especially if you're not given to spontaneous speaking. Some folks are, but a lot are not. And what I realized when I first got into teaching leadership, because I started off with this, my first rodeo, it was, it was, it was lackluster. It was dishwater doll. It was as though I was reading from the book. And that's okay. I needed to go through that. It was a group of poor souls in Virginia that needed PDUs. And I was training 330 people on PMP stuff all around the United States for a firm called Vangent. But these other poor souls are already PMP. So I, I had to do the PDU thing for them. And it, it was just not as good as it could have been. Why? Because I did not understand the secret sauce in delivery. The secret sauce in delivery is, first of all, practice reading what you want to say. But don't just read the content. You got to build in anecdotes. You got to build in quotes. You got to build in your personal stories. I don't care whatever the story is about, it is your story. So look for your personal story and add it to the mix. It just adds more credibility to you. So you got to think about anecdotes, quotes, story. And then again, anecdotes, quotes, story. And then Plan it all out. Use the power of AI. ChatGPT is there. It's your friend. Put it all into ChatGPT and say, make me sound compelling, professional, and convincing. Make me sound compelling, professional, and convincing. You'll be amazed at what it will do with a script you've written. And then practice that script over and over and over and over and over again. Practice it in front of your family. Practice it in front of friends. Record it. Record the life out of that thing over and over again, and then watch it, and then critique, and then make that tweak. Do it again, and again, and become even more intentional with putting in pauses and breaks. It's not normal to just speak a stream of sentences. No, that's not how people speak. So put some sentences like a break in front of the sentence before continuing for a pregnant pause. Then continue and practice the art of that. Stories, anecdotes, quotes, and then a teaching moment from John's material or whoever's material. And then a statistic, right? A shocking statistic. Do you know that, like Michelle opened with a really nice statistic. Michelle, do you remember your statistic? I, I don't remember it, but it was a good statistic. It was like, what number of people, what percentage of people actually act on what they said they were going to do or something to that degree. So if you if you open with a shocking statistic, you immediately grab the attention and then you begin to lay on top of it. Anecdote, story, story from someone else's life. But we want to limit how many stories we take from other people's lives. So if you have like a one hour talk, you could put maybe four of your stories in there. You could put three of someone else's story. And then by the time you load it with quotes, anecdotes, fast facts, shocking news, and then learning or teaching moments, you're the king of the hill. It's You're the queen of the hill. It's going to go down a lot better than just content, 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 content. There's only so much we as humans can take away from content. But when you hear a story, ah, all right, I'm off my soapbox. I've gone one minute over. So that's all I wanted you to take away. Um, and finally, put your dream to the test. Write out your dream. What is your dream? Write it out. Write it out. 
It's going to change, but write it out, okay? Your dream, uh, we've always said this at PLI, so this is not new, vision. If you are not focusing on a vision, if you're not thinking daily about the vision and the missions, right? So all these books I'm writing, why am I writing these books? It's not because I don't have stuff to do. This is part of the mission to get my vision accomplished. I want to reach people. I want to help people as many as I can, right? And that's my vision. And I'm doing all of these as missions to achieving that, right? I also have a vision to touch people through my music. Before I got on this call, I did a recording. Why? Because it's part of my vision to reach people in music, a positive message. So whatever your vision is, just keep on reminding yourself and hit those missions. Even when you feel like dead weight, you don't want to do anything. Just remember, this is part of my calling. I got to do this because ultimately it's going to lead to my goal. So what happens when you go to the gym? Day one, right? You don't see anything. Day two, day three, you don't. But as it begins to compound, one day you're like, oh my goodness, it looks like I might have the beginnings of some actual muscle. <laughs> but it didn't come from a day. It came from you developing. So John says leadership develops daily, not in a day. Just remember that. All right, my friends, thank you. I'll stop the recording.